This podcast is part of the Game and Entertainment Network. Visit tgenetwork.net to find the latest episodes from all our shows. You're listening to Beyond Boss Fights, gaming conversations with interesting people. And now, here's your host, Brax Wolf. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Beyond Boss Fights, episode 25. Today, I have the distinct pleasure of speaking to a couple of podcasters who I very much enjoy working with and whose own work I've thoroughly enjoyed throughout the years. In fact, Beyond Boss Fights was modeled in part after one of their past projects, the Contains Moderate Peril podcast. TGN alums Brian and Roger join me today to talk about walking away from a podcast and or blog, the changes in life that might lead one to make such a decision, and they even let me in on some of their top secret future plans. So to steal one of Brian's old catchphrases, let's dive right in. Well, welcome to the show, Brian and Roger. Uh, it's it's great to have you guys on. I know you recently shut down your own podcast, and so this is kind of a, a second go around for you guys. Uh, Roger, you're kind of the unofficial co-host of Beyond Boss Fights. This is your third visit. Um, so thanks once again for, for gracing us with your presence. And Brian, this is your first time. So instead of going right into our main topic, I'm going to ask if you would give us your definitive gaming history. So where did you start video gaming? What are some of the high points in the middle, the things that you really enjoyed, and, and, and how did you progress through your quote-unquote gaming career, and, and what are you doing today? Okay, do you remember the Pong console? Yeah. The very first video game console back in the 70s? I've heard of it. I never played it. That was my first game. So I've been around a while. Went from there to the... Uh, well, that was an Atari game. I believe Atari brought that out. And then we had the Atari, what, 2600? 20, and, 2600 uh, was my first console. Graduated to a Commodore 64 at one point, which I played. I had so many. I had a shoebox full of games. It was so much fun. Still finally remember a lot of that. And that got me. That was computer gaming at that point. And that's been my main, main focus ever since. Um Really used to be into like simulators, like flight simulators, helicopters, planes, that kind of stuff. And then I gave it up in the late 90s for a few years. And then in, uh, I don't know, about a year, half a year after WoW came out, I was in my car driving home from work one day and I thought, you know, I should start playing computer games again. I've heard about this, these MMOs and never played one looked one up and settled on World of Warcraft and I started playing it. And that brought me into the MMO realm, which took me to Lotro, which became a a podcast and a website that I ran about that. And that's where I met Roger and ended up meeting you and then everybody else. So I've been, I would say gaming has taken up the majority of my life. That's pretty accurate for most of my guests, actually. So most of them don't go quite as far back as the original Pong console, though. I can remember it. It was. I just remember we we had this thing that my parents bought and brought home, and you hooked it to your TV on the back where the antenna was. <laughs> That's how you hooked these things up. This UHF converter, I think it was, with this little slide switch, and we hooked this thing up. And we got. I don't know if you've ever seen a, what Pong looked like. It was basically two vertical lines and a little square ball, <laughs> and maybe an outline of a. a like a, a court or something, and you basically bounce this ball back and forth. And we had paddles, and my brothers and I were playing this, thinking this was the coolest thing we had ever seen in our lives because there had you couldn't do that on your TV before that. I know it sounds really quaint now, and it sounds really stupid, but it was literally groundbreaking at the time. It wasn't even in color. It was black and white. So my version of Pong was in color, I think, but uh, the 2600 had a, had a Pong cartridge that had about 56 different varieties of the lines going back and forth across the screen. 
<laughs> some of them were called tennis, some of them were called badminton, you know, but they <laughs> they're well then you have breakout. Remember that where you, you yep. put the thing to the top of the screen and then it, it did that. And I remember on the twenty six hundred was Duck Hunt. I think it was Duck Hunter, the one where the things flew over and you shot them with the cannons from the ground. Maybe it was planes or something. I don't know. It's probably called planes. <laughs> it, was just, it was like the stupid game. It was like the cartridge that came with it was the one I played the most. I was, I was never too intelligent about my game choices. So, Okay, well, we'll go ahead and move into the main topic. We, we could spend probably a couple hours on memory lane there. But uh wanted to talk to you guys because – We've had a had a kind of history on this show of of talking to people uh, who are content creators in kind of different phases of creating their content. Some of them um, are just starting up. Some of them have been doing it a while. You know, Roger and I had a conversation not too long ago about the aging gamer, which was actually a very well received show, and I think a lot of people could relate to our complaining and curmudgeonly attitudes. So you guys are in the phase now where you have just closed down your podcast for the second time for the two of you. And for Roger, you just closed down your blog as well, your gaming blog, entertainment blog. And so I just wanted to see if you could walk us through why the decisions to close the co- the, the podcast and the blog were made. Sure. It's, as I said, on the final Burton and Scrooge podcast, it's a bit of a perfect storm of circumstances. I think most people, as they get older, find that there's more and more activities and demands upon their time and it's the old question of trying to balance that i've always had an urge to write and create content i still do but factors have come to play recently that are taking up my time as i said my my parents are getting old and they're not well and i'm having to rearrange my daily schedule to make myself available to help them I'm, i'm also a grandfather and there's babysitting requirements of me and couple that with a perfectly normal but sad sort of reappraisal of my relationship with gaming and a dwindling of enthusiasm for certain subjects along with increasing operating costs and and things like that and all of these factors have come to play and have contributed to the final definitive decision that now would be a good time to draw a line under blogging on a daily basis that I just cannot simply sustain that anymore and to draw a line under the current podcast um contains moderate peril got a little bit too big and a little bit too sprawling and was difficult to administer because we were running with five co-hosts and across multiple time zones we were also very much focused on gaming when we were doing that show. And yet, for me and Brian, we were both at a time when our interest in a lot of the games that we were talking about was beginning to dwindle or at least change. We've always been interested in the industry rather than the logistics of playing the actual game itself. So I think it was inevitable that Contains Moderate Peril podcast had run out of steam. But we still felt this need to produce a show. So we did Burton and Scrooge and the audience very kindly came on board i think out of sort of well we're familiar with you guys but i think there was um the perception that people still expect us to do a fair amount of gaming discussion (laughs) we wanted to talk about pretty much anything other than gaming And, and, and we felt that there are days when we got together to do a show if we if our hearts weren't in it we just didn't really want to do it and there's nothing worse than putting out i think a lacklustre show. So it just seemed when you weighed up all these factors that it was appropriate to actually draw a a line under them. And on mature reflection now, it might have been sensible to actually close everything down in July 2014 when Contains Moderate Power was running into hosting issues because I very nearly then, Brian, didn't I? shut it then because until host one plus very kindly stepped in and offered free hosting because my costs were virtually going to quadruple i was just thinking this is going to shut now and perhaps it might have been sensible to have actually done it then rather than had sort of a start and a stop and a start and a stop and sort of be a little bit dithering over what you you exactly is that you want to do well i'm 
speaking as someone who begged you not to close up shop at that point, I'm glad we got at least a few more uh, months, uh, maybe possibly a year out of you or so. Um, the content was enjoyable enough that in that, like you said, people, people followed you over to the new show, Brian, when, when Roger came to you, um, this last time and said, I, I think it's about time to close up shop here. What was your reaction to that? I hung up on him. Yeah. It, you know, contains moderate peril and Burton and Scrooge technically are Roger's podcast because he was the one that had the website and he does the editing. And so, um, I don't want to say I, I didn't have any say in things cause I did, but when he decided to do this, I, I mean, I, I'd still be doing it to be honest, if you just want a straight answer. However, I get it and I, I agree with it. So we're done for now. You, you said that people still had some kind of an expectation of gaming conversation, yet you had a couple episodes of nothing but pretty much bacon. <laughs> that was a good show. That and, was one of my favorites. And it people awesome. still reacted very favorably to that show, if I remember right. That was one of the funnest shows we did, actually. Yeah. To be honest, you're right. We probably could have got away with straying away from gaming on a regular basis. Um, on mature reflection, I think what we've realized in particularly this year is although people possibly do like us to talk about some subjects, they're also more than happy to go down the strange little <laughs> offshoot journeys that we go on. But um, again, it's a question of trying to come up with subjects that you think are going to be engaging with people. And that can be difficult sometimes. You know, you, you want to, there are pl plenty of subjects that come up on a daily basis that I think, oh, I'd like to get my teeth into that. And you think, mm, not sure if other listeners will. We, we have had over the years a lot of subjects that we thought we were going to do and even started to record that never made it, um, that we just weren't into or didn't work out. We have had a lot of a lot of things that I thought we were going to talk about that we just never had time to. Um, so it's, it's amazing what's on the cutting room floor and it's, it's, um, it's just interesting. I can actually go back and listen to any of our episodes and pretty much tell you what my frame of mind was and probably Rogers at the time. And I don't know what everybody else, if everybody else can pick up on it, but I can tell when we weren't a hundred percent into it. And I always hated those episodes the most because we weren't giving 100%. And if you're not going to give 100%, why do it? And that's one of the reasons I'm okay with it shutting down because I, I think if you do listen back the past, well, all the Burton and Scrooge stuff, and then you listen to the end of, of Contains Modern Peril, you know, there, there was a lot of good content, but there was a lot of, eh, it was just okay. And we didn't like to do just okay. Now you guys talked about kind of your phase in life has changed and, and your life situations have changed, but have over the last four years, four years is a long time, especially in gaming and technology. Have you found that your interests have also changed during those four years and, and possibly your passions are now directed in other areas? Most definitely. I still very much enjoy blogging and podcasting, but the main dilemma is what do you write and podcast about? 2010 to about 2012, maybe 2013, heavily into gaming, heavily into the MMO scene. There was a heck of a lot going on. Lotro suddenly went free to play. Um, Guild Wars 2 and a whole slew of other new MMOs came out. Um, we got totally stoked about Star Wars The Old Republic and jumped on that hype train and, and rode it for several months. I think Brian wrote it for even less time than that. And you know, it's just inevitable that your relationship will change. I'm also at an interesting age in my personal life. I'm, I'm sure listeners know that I'm, I'm 48. I'll be 49 in December. And you know, a lot of things happen at, at you at that time of life. You know, your personal life, what physically happens to you as a person. And all these things sort of take a toll upon you and the one thing and i'll probably come back to this subject later on um i think the, the the thing that's changed the most for me is my relationship with the wider gaming community and 
just felt that because of these changes, maybe I didn't necessarily want to write about gaming so much. And some of the things that I would have wanted to write about might have been perceived as negative. And people don't want to see a website that just writes negatively all the time. And I wouldn't want to do that myself. It doesn't make for interesting reading. Uh, reading. So, yeah, these things did all contribute. And I, I do feel that I'm in a different place now and I have a different outlook on gaming. I still enjoy it, still think it's a great pastime, but I don't quite put it on the pedestal that I might have done five years ago or so. Yeah, I think, you know, if you look at people's gaming hobbies, any kind of hobby, actually, there's it's cyclical, right? And I think four years ago, Roger and I had a lot of time on our hands, and we were very passionate, and that was a good thing. Four years later, not so much time on our hands, not nearly as passionate. That's not so good. So, and I just think that that's a normal course of events. Uh, people, you know, throughout your lives, you have different uh, interests at different times. And f- for me, right now, I get, I think I'm burned out of MMOs. It's safe to say, and probably I've been burned out of MMOs for quite a while. And it, it you know, pretty publicly, I've been burned out um, on the podcast because I've quit them how many times <laughs> in the past three or four times I can think of. I've stopped playing and started again a couple months later, and it's just been this long, drawn-out, painful process. That's that's not a good state of mind to be in when you're trying to serve an audience and, and be positive and upbeat and, and enjoy what you're doing and have them enjoy what you're saying. So I do want to go ahead and, and hit on the community aspect. Um, Roger, you and I did two whole shows on gaming communities. And so it's, it's kind of funny that uh, you said something here that resonates with me a little bit. And I, I tend to wonder if it was – if it's me being involved over a certain number of years now that I've seen kind of a, the cycle go through a couple of times, or if it's just that my age now is, is finally catching up with me, so to speak in, in that I kind of keep somewhat engaged with the gaming community, um, mainly through Twitter, but also through blogs and things like that. And sometimes I've just have to put it all down. It's like, okay, this tweet is just the last straw today. I don't really care about any of this stuff that everybody seems to be so passionate and angry about. So I'm just going to forget about all that. I'm going to go home and play my game by myself. Yeah, I I agree. It it actually happens on multiple levels. First of all, let's just talk about our immediate community, the people that we've known for a while and we interact with and we all met because we were all writing blogs or we were all doing podcasts. I still have a great deal of time and affection and respect for my colleagues who do this. But I've noticed quite naturally that over the last five years, they, like myself, have had other demands on the time. And you start noticing that people who were very enthusiastic are now just attending to their day-to-day lives. They they don't write quite so often. Or if they do write, they're not quite as feisty or as analytical as they used to be because they're coming in from a day's work and it's like do i want to write something controversial and then run the risk of a storm happening or i'm just too tired anyway so you you notice a change there and i'm you know again it's something that's happened to me so i'm I'm not saying that in a a, in a judgmental way but i miss long-form criticism and i I don't see a, a great deal of that in my immediate community and also as you say you're sitting there playing your games or doing anything and you suddenly notice that there's some sort of storm brewing on twitter so you start doing a little bit of digging and then the next thing you know you just see this massive tidal wave of vitriol and effluence and hatred flowing one way and then flowing back the other way and you just think to yourself and i actually tweeted this man i wish i could get people this motivated about things that actually count like closures of schools or you know funding of your local hospital or, or lobbying your local authority to fix the roads and get the street lighting work do you know what i mean this is where i'm mm-hmm. turning into that get off my lawn sort of person where <laughs> you it's just <laughs> I'm not saying that being enthusiastic about gaming and, and being an ardent fan is a bad thing, but I think possibly age gives you a certain degree of perspective, and I, I do find it sometimes a little bit frustrating. We, we don't like to nail our colours to the mast and be associated with a particular group and then, then find... It's like if you are involved with a local sports team, 
and you play well and you and you do well or you just have a reputation of just being good triers and determined people and then one person on your team lets the side down by doing something really bad and that seems to have happened one too many times within the gaming community and I'm, one of the reasons now I take a big step back. Yeah, what, what I've been finding tiresome for a while is there seems to be a lot of drama basically for drama's sake and there's just a lot of a lot of hot air and a lot of activity and a lot of chitter chatter about a whole lot of nothing and it gets old after a while doesn't it i mean it's just you know like like you said it, you know games are optional and this is a hobby and nobody has to be doing this and I, and i you know some people make a living from doing this which is wonderful but everybody who plays games does it because they want to not because they have to drama is interesting and and fun and but it's all the same after a while it just seems like it's always about what the next game is going to be or how crappy the game that just came out ended up being or what game is going to be out of business and it and it just seems to be like these themes that that have been going on for since we've been doing this and we've been caught up in it too and it just after a while it's like it's all same thing to me yeah, it's, you know, so, like I said, it, it's it's interesting for a while until you start to, if you step back a little bit and you go, oh, this, what's been in the news recently, Wildstar is one, like layoffs, right? How many other games have had layoffs in the past four years? Think about it. <laughs> Every time it happens, there's always this, a bunch of noise starts happening around that and people crowing about, it, oh, I told you so. And other people, no, it's fine, it's fine, right? It's happened. I mean, it's it's it happened before. It happens today. It's going to happen in the future. It's never going to change. It doesn't seem. So it got a little old being part of it for me. I mean, what actually got achieved by that massive brouhaha that came out of the tracer butt thing? <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. The pose. <laughs> yeah. One crass. You know, you could object on objectification grounds you know and there's a good argument to be had there but you know is that really the context of it i just objected it for the fact that it was crass and obvious and a crass and obvious pose after a massive brouhaha was changed for an equally crass and obvious pose and you just stand <laughs> back and say okay both sides got larry the toys got thrown out of the pram. All the crockery got broken. You're now both out of breath and panting. And then adults just come into the room and said, what's been achieved here? Nothing. And I just find that a little wearing after a while. And that's, you know, that's why I, everything's just got pushed to the side a little and, bit. And, yeah. And then the worst part of that is six months from now, nobody will ever remember that that even happened because it's yeah. completely irrelevant. Yeah. And then eight months from now, it'll happen again. Yeah, over something easily. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit specifically about um, about the Burton and Scrooge podcast because this is always a part of it that I found pretty humorous. But, but of course, I know you guys fairly well. So at times during that show, you you enjoyed faking disdain for your own listeners. And like I said in the show notes here, at times perhaps it's, it wasn't so fake. But how much of that was just playing a part of the the old grumpy curmudgeon gamer, and how much of it was more of a healthy approach of let's just not worry about what people think about us, uh, let's not put much stock into popular opinion. A bit of both. I think anyone who's got a podcast, a bit of advice for those people just starting up. It's you do form a bit of a online persona. And then there's roles to be played, you know. It, it, I mean, Brian and I are essentially the same people that appear on the show, but possibly it does get slightly amplified for the medium of the podcast because it's just a good hook to add to your show. So, you know, being curmudgeonly to the listeners and mocking them, it's just part of the of the, the show ambience. I mean, back on the earlier shows, Brian, we used to – regularly on a weekly basis mock baldy didn't we and and, and oh, find yeah. some way to make a joke at baldy's expense and he still listens to the show and, and on occasion tweets us and i don't think there's any harm done there it was done in the right way it was never malicious or spiteful sometimes we might make jokes at about the listeners but they're not really about the listeners we're taking a swipe at the wider community possibly for some of the reasons that we've just said people can tell people can tell when you're pulling their leg in a good-natured way 
well, most people can, shall we say. And then there's a fine line between doing that and overstepping it and biting the hand that feeds you. And that's just not a good plan. Never bite the hand that feeds you because, you know, your audience will pick up on it and you'll get a f- you'll get swatted and worse and then they'll just walk away. So, um, no, I, I think it was a bit of both. We, we played a bit of a part and then sometimes we would use that, that routine as a way of just, as you said, just, cocking a snoop at the the broad popular consensus yeah i I think when when we started burton and scrooge the idea was to kind of get back to basics a little bit and really to do it for ourselves and that's why we tried bacon podcasts and i talked about soylent and we talked about you know cooking and and some other things we we experiment around a little bit and it was there was a lot of shtick in there like the sod off and uh you know we we acted you know we're gonna put no effort into this which is if you've ever done a podcast there's a lot of effort that goes into a podcast yeah. believe me yeah. so believe me that's a hundred percent stick it, it made it fun for us and it made us able to continue and i hope it came across to all of the listeners that it was stick and it, it you know it, it it was meant to be and, and so maybe we didn't do a good job of it i don't know <laughs> Well, I, I understood what, what you were doing there, and I thought it was pretty hilarious. As far as telling people to sod off, feel free to use the soundbite from my show when I Im- impersonated Roger at any point. Oh, well, I'm sure, possibly, who knows, that could be turned into a mega mix at a later <laughs> date. But, <coughs> excuse me, the, the whole sod off thing is just playing to that cliched stereotype that British people are superior and aloof for no good reason. Yeah, it's, it's not it's, a stereotype. <laughs> right, fact. <laughs> Cultural imperative. So staying staying along the lines of, of your audience and your interactions with your audience, you've spoken before, I know, as far back as Contains Moderate Peril, because even before I started my podcast, I can remember you talking about this and making a mental note of it. You talk about a feeling of accountability that you gain as you interact with your audience along the way. Did you feel this towards the end of your podcast and, and did it possibly press you to continue on even longer than you would have? It's a contributory factor. We've known for a while that we've got an audience, not the world's biggest audience, but there's a, a sort of, shall we say, a hardcore group of people who have picked up on us at various times. We tell this because there are regular people that tweet us. There are regular people that leave comments and leave us feedback. So, And, and the numbers have shown that there's a, a group and we've we've moved from one podcast to another and people very kindly followed us which we thought was great also with contains moderate peril the, the website there was a point in 2014 when the, the 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 monthly numbers were pretty respectable i thought they were pretty respectable so you've got an audience and i i take an attitude that when you produce content you should do it to the best of your ability if a job's worth doing it's worth doing well Therefore, we've always liked to make sure that a show is edited well, presented well. Burton and Scrooge, we got away from a fixed schedule, but contains moderate peril. It was always try and release it at the same day because people expect it to be there. I think it's a Japanese concept, cultural concept of giri, obligation. And it's more complicated. I mean, that's just a very, very simple translation of the term, but it's more of that. It's that it's you've you've taken on board a commitment and you want to honor that commitment for your own sake and for the sake of the people that partake of the product etc i might sound a little bit pretentious and arty farty but it did play a part and we continued with contains moderate power and we tried to change the show by bringing on board additional hosts because we felt the show was flagging and we wanted to improve the show because we wanted to give people a good show and we felt it was important to bring on board extra hosts. It was in, important to have greater diversity on the actual team. And uh, again, I just want to say, I've, I, I, I'm sorry that we brought on board two additional hosts and then gave them such a short run before we yeah. canceled the, the, the show. And I've actually been in touch with both Hannah and Pam about that because I felt bad about it because they thought, oh, this is good. We're getting into a show here and going to be a regular platform for us. And then he got to do it for about four or five maximum episodes before the, the plug got pulled. Certainly that sense of your audience and your obligations to them did have uh, an impact. But also I want to say also the flip side of that, as it's been mentioned on various 
podcasts and turned up on um, the Geek to Geek podcast, they talk about you used to get feedback and now the feedback mainly gets placed on Twitter. And for quite a long time with Burton and Scrooge and the Contains Modern Apparel website, you just don't get the feedback anymore. And it's nice to have the feedback. Content creators can't live in a vacuum. And people just give you a quick soundbite on Twitter, which is nice. It's better than nothing. But sometimes you need a little bit more than that. And if you're not getting any sort of sense of direction coming back from the listeners, that can contribute to your sort of your quandary over whether you continue or not. So, you know, that's just a, 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 a flip side of the obligation towards the audience. Yeah, I have to say that every bit of feedback that we've ever gotten uh, has definitely been appreciated. Uh, yes. You know, positive, negative, whatever. Because I've often felt at times like we're recording and producing this thing into this vast vacuum out there because we didn't get a lot of feedback. Now, part of that's on me personally because I didn't interact much on social media. Uh, Roger was kind of the point man there basically because I lost my Twitter account access <laughs> that I had set up for the show. I still don't know how to get hold of you, Brian. <laughs> I, that's, well, you know, it, 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 it was easier to let him do it, but uh, if he was getting feedback, sometimes it wasn't even making it to me, if that makes sense. And, and then I wasn't able to directly interact with the fans. We have people that still continue, you know, to, to give us feedback or leave comments or whatever. I think they go back to mortar or bust, don't we? Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't Fruin go back? Yeah, oh, Chris Fruin, yeah. Chris Fruin, who's been just literally around since the beginning, I think, and, and other people. And, and so that's awesome. But um, I don't know if I felt obligated. I just – I've always been aware that there's an audience and we wanted to record content that we hoped our audience was interested in is the best I can put it. Yeah, you said once, Roger, I remember that – when you were shutting down Contains Modern Peril, there was this this vast silence until you announced that it was going away. And then all of a sudden, everybody kind of had this outpouring, which was nice. But but it was like, where, where was all of this when we were going strong for a hundred and however many episodes? Yeah, indeed. And I believe exactly the same thing happened with Brian when, when he said he was going to close Mordor or Bust. I mean, there'd always been a trickle and a stream of, of, of comments and stuff. But then when he actually said, Brian, oh, this is it, didn't he? You were quite surprised by it. Oh, it, it was like everybody came out of the woodwork all of a sudden, which was <clears throat> wonderful. But there was also a part of me that had wished I was getting some of that feedback prior to that because I might have kept it going. Because, like I said, it's not, sometimes it does. It, it's like you, you know, it's like you're standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon, shouting, and is there anyone down there listening? And yeah. if they are not, you know, unfortunately, because of the way this works, you know, we don't have numbers like you get on TV, like they have the the Nielsen numbers, right? And, and we just get our little listen, listener numbers, but it doesn't tell us who's listening, and it doesn't really tell us if they liked it or not, and so. It's it's we just have a very rough estimate of what's happening. So, like I said, whenever anybody tweeted at Roger or left a comment on the blog and gave us any kind of feedback, it was amazingly wonderful because it it sort of let us knew where we stood. Yeah, yeah. I just want to reiterate that point. It's it's not about having our egos massaged, although that is nice. Um, yes. Won't lie about that. But no, it's. The feedback is there to say this bit of the show worked or I didn't care for this bit or thank you, that was a very useful part or have you thought about maybe exploring this and talking about that? That I think all podcasters and content creators crave that. I was I was listening to Couch Potatoes, in fact, this morning um, while soaking in the tub, latest show. And it's I, I, there were several things that sprang to mind. I thought, oh, I must drop his lane a line over there. And I'm, I'm I'm equally as bad as everyone else. It's like, it's now 12 hours later, and have I dropped him a line over that? No, I haven't. In fact, now that I've said it, I will make sure that I do. Yeah, yeah you better now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, that's, that's an interesting point. I remember a long time ago, again, before I was doing my own podcast, I was listening to the MMO Networks too long didn't listen, which was a great thirty minute show with uh, Sip and Dodge. Yeah, and they took two two topics and they did fifteen minutes each. And they and Sip put out a call for topic ideas, and I tweeted something back at him, thinking, "Well, you know, these guys are a pretty 
good podcasts on a pretty decent network. They'll probably never get to my suggestion. To my surprise, within about 20 minutes, Sip had tweeted back and said, great, thanks for the suggestion. They hadn't gotten anything, mm. you know, because people just don't – it's such a one-way medium in some ways that people don't get used to the, the ability to interact with the show's creators. And I think the creators, especially at, at a, you know the size that our shows are, really enjoy that type of interaction. It, it may be a little bit different when you have, you know, tens of thousands of people downloading. Um, that might be a little bit more difficult. But certainly at our level, um, I make it a point to interact with, you know, to uh, respond to everybody who wants to interact with me. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you an example of something that frustrated me personally. And this was for the duration of Burton and Scrooge, we were hosted on SoundCloud. And I can think of quite a few episodes where we specifically requested people go to SoundCloud and leave a little note because SoundCloud has a way to do that right on the file. And just just leave us some kind of feedback, and I don't think it ever happened the entire time. There's a couple of people that did it, um, okay. but it wasn't a common occurrence. And the great thing about SoundCloud is, as you're listening, if it's like 20 minutes in and you're just talking about Star Trek Online and you say, "I really dislike this feature," someone can then leave a comment saying, "Oh, really? I really like this." And you know, the, and it's contextual comments. It's really, yeah. really good. It's a good system. And and I want to be clear: it's okay that nobody left comments, but. You know, can you understand that when you ask repeatedly for something that that's would is very quick and easy to do, and nobody takes up on it? At some point, you're kind of wondering, well, then why are we doing this? I guess it's a bit like voting. I think sometimes yeah. there's a mindset of I don't have to go and turn out today because everyone else is going to vote for whoever the candidate is, and then you turn turn the news on later and it's like, oh, there's been a landslide for the opposition because everyone assumed that someone else was going to go and do it. On a flip side, whenever we did an Ask Me Anything, which we did a couple of those, people had tons of great questions for us. So that was awesome. By people the way. like Ask Me Anything yes. because then it's like, you know, they can just be as you know, daft as they want to be. It's, you know, I think that's a total different sort of ask, different sort of category of questions you want. And I must admit, I'm very impressed with both the, the calibers of questions for both the Ask Me Anythings we did. Yeah, I haven't tried that yet. I, w- I would like to try that at some point, but I'm a little bit nervous about what uh, people are going to want me to try and divulge here. Yeah, the be- beauty of the Ask Me Anything is you don't have to answer everything. <laughs> yeah, you can you can do a bit of filtering. Exactly. Yeah, because someone asked me about all those murders that I did, and I just didn't want to talk about them. <laughs> well, b- best not to put that uh, yeah. in, in, in the recording. So, so, Roger, this is specifically for you because it's it's something – an interaction that we had – in the past, and I don't remember what podcast it was on at this point. I don't remember if it was on Beyond Boss Fights or if it was on a, a tribunal. But I, I asked you something about about your blogging, and one of your responses to me was, well, I think I would always be doing some kind of blogging or writing because I just like writing, um, indicating that you would probably do it if it was just pencil and paper without anybody else. Um, since, since shuttering the blog, in which you wrote a lot on, you're very prolific, have you started to feel that pull to write again? Uh, yes. Um, I've actually tweeted recently about how it's frustrating because I've just read something and it's really antagonized me and I'm going to go and write a blog post. Oh, no, I can't because I don't have a blog anymore. Oops. Yeah. I mean, I still regularly make notes. I keep notepads in strategic places around the house. There's always one on the main desk where I work. I use the voice recorder on my phone. I, I, I'm, I'm collating data and putting bullet points down for posts that are never going to get written or posted anywhere, but I just can't help doing it. It's, it's what I like doing. And this dovetails into another point that might get discussed a little later. Let's just say that that energy is now being diverted into um, other things. But yeah, I, 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 I miss writing. If I had more time, if my circumstances were different, I'd go back to writing on a daily basis, but it's just not a viable thing to do at the moment. I can't commit to that time frame and um, can't really be 100% specific about committing to a weekly one. So rather than be vague, it's nothing I hate worse than being vague. So yeah, I, I just decided that the sensible thing to do is just to shelve it until I'm in a position to do so. But yeah, it irks me. I, I know, Brian, you, you've talked before in the past about, and not only did you have a blog in the past, but you also used to write huge blog like comments in user forums. Uh, do, do you miss being able to communicate in that way? Or is that just something that you kind of don't even care about anymore? 
So here, here's kind of a little behind the scenes. I wrote a lot, but it was usually in emails to Roger. <laughs> yeah. It was not like I would send him sometimes just emails and just do a brain dump and he probably never even read them, which was fine. So I was actually writing. It just was not ever anything for public consumption. <laughs> Roger never I, – I expected him to jump in and say, no, I read every single one of those. <laughs> no, he probably, probably – I, I know. <laughs> no, it did. No, it did. There so. were some long ones that were just kind of weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and also I'm sure there's a lot of people that we know who like to write. And a lot of what they write doesn't see the light of day. That there are posts that get written for therapeutic value rather than for publication value. Yeah, what, what I would do is I I spent more time than Roger actually out there reading up on things because I kind of like research, and so I would be on the various gaming forums and the websites and on subreddits and whatever, and sort of we didn't have a formal process, but you know, hey. What are we going to do next episode? Well, here's some things that are happening. Oh, well, then here's what we can talk about, and then we would go with it. And so that it takes a lot of time to read all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Which means you know he he was focused on writing what he wanted to write to get his post up every day, and then I felt like kind of part of my job was to be out there just seeing what was really happening and whether it was something that, that intersected with our interests so that we could be able to talk about it. And it seemed it worked pretty well, I thought. I, I can tell you that I'm at a point now where my blogging production has slowed down considerably and it's in my podcasting as well. And I think I've kind of, kind of hit that point where, like you said earlier, Roger, I don't want to be doing it just for the sake of saying something. I don't want to be posting something just for the sake of – because I used to post something every week or twice a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't want to be podcasting just because I normally put a podcast out once a month. You know, I My last podcast was eight minutes long. I had one thought and I got it out there and that was it, you know. Um, but at the same time, if I shut everything down this – is, this is one of my fears – is that – I don't really know what I would do if I had that itch again. You know, I just posted something about um, graphical snobbery on my on my blog uh, yesterday, and I and replied. Yeah, he did, and it was the first actual kind of quote unquote think piece that I'd done in probably about three months. But if I didn't have the blog, what would I have done with that? You know, I certainly wouldn't post it on my personal blog because nobody who reads my personal blog would care anything about computer graphics in video games. So, you know, it's just a fear of mine that if, if I was going to just shutter everything, what, what would I do then if I had, didn't have that type of outlet? Indeed. I've, I've heard this as well. Uh, this subject has come up quite a few times. There was a recent Twitter discussion. Who was it now? It was Belgast and Wilhelm. And they both said that they fear that if they ever stop for too long, They'll never start again, and that's one of the things that compels them to keep writing, even on the day sometimes when they don't want to. And I must admit, I could see the sense in that because it's like I did stop because I got sick and I also got lazy, and then I just – that's also one of the reasons why it then all came crashing down. It is nice to have some sort of site or some sort of outlet there, even if you're not going to use it regularly, just so when you do want to use it, it is there. But then you have to – as I said to Brian, I said – even if it's there and I'm not using it, it's too much of a temptation. Yep. For me, the solution is to go total, total cold turkey for a while, just to literally put the pen and paper down and walk off. So, Brian, in one of the last podcasts you guys did uh, together, you mentioned that you hadn't been gaming anymore, and it was something that you were actually trying to consciously get away from. Did you want to go into that a little bit, maybe your reasons behind it and any benefits or maybe non-benefits that you're seeing from it? Yeah, I can. Actually, since I think it was middle of February, I stopped gaming uh, cold turkey. And I am still no longer gaming at all. And that means not only am I not playing games, I am not uh, watching Twitch TV like I used to like. I am not visiting game forums, although I did visit massively about a week ago and read literally two months worth of gaming news just to catch up. And my intention is to not game for the rest of this year. The reason I'm doing that, and I might have touched upon this, I don't remember if I did or not, uh, I just came to the realization that gaming takes a lot of time and that I was spending too much time on it to the detriment of other things in my life. 
And I just decided since we were shutting down the podcast, it was a good time to step away from gaming for a while and focus on the other things in my life, you know, my family and other hobbies that I have and I enjoy that I've sort of put on the back burner. So it, it might seem like a drastic step to some, but for whatever reason, the way I'm personally made up is I'm kind of an all or nothing person. I throw myself into things and then when I'm done with them, I'm kind of done with them. So right now I'm, I'm done. I suspect I'll be back to gaming at some point in the future, maybe even at some point this year. I know that there's a WoW expansion coming out this year and I typically play the WoW expansions just because I always have. But that doesn't mean I have to play it when it comes out, does it? What types of things have you noticed as far as the change goes? I mean, are you are you able to do the things that you wanted to do before but weren't able to? Or are you do you feel like you're contributing more by doing these things? Or what, what has that kind of led to? I have shockingly more time in my life to do a lot of things. Like, it's amazing how many hours I was spending gaming or thinking about gaming or reading about gaming. Oh, my gosh. It's been amazing. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten to... You know, I've started researching a book, and I've gotten to you know work on some of these projects that I've always sort of had a mind to, but I didn't really have the time to. Well, now I have the time to. You know, I kind of took that excuse away, and I've been able to do some more social things and do some things with my family, and and it's it's been great. It, it's uh, it was surprisingly easy to do. I thought I thought it would be really rough, and it was only rough for like a day. (laughs) And I think that's because I was just in the habit of turning on Twitch and watching the certain people I liked and going to all the subreddits I did and all the forums. And and I, I, that first day I found myself wanting to do that again and then stopping myself. But then the day after that, I was like, Oh yeah, I have this other thing I want to do. I'll just, I did that instead. Surprisingly, I don't turn on my computer very much because I built a gaming PC to game on, and it turns out when you don't play games, you don't need to have your gaming PC on, do you? I know it sounds dumb, but this computer that we're talking right now normally just stays off days and days at a time. What I'm hoping this will do is next year sometime or whenever I get around to it, I'll be able to step back in and and just like, you know, if we eventually do a podcast and be really fresh and just kind of have a better mental attitude towards it all roger do you have any plans to stop gaming um no but mrs peril probably does <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be moving soon and i shall be moving back in with someone that i'm currently in a relationship with great deal of history there and the fact that i'm actually going to be cohabitating is going to change the dynamics of things and anyone who says no it won't i mean i've my, my son's bedroom is going to be my office i mean he's grown up he's got his own house now but i'm not going to be able to lurk in there all the time well i could but i don't think that would be beneficial for a healthy relationship um what i'm i'm hoping is going to happen is that it's going to lead to greater more targeted productivity i will game but it will be for more specific reasons it's like i have these goals i'm now going to pursue them rather than i'm just going to sit here at three in the afternoon and at 11 at night still be playing witcher 3 i don't think that's going to be happening anymore and, and quite right too I, I just think a lot of the people listening would just understand that depending on where you're at in your life your gaming habits adapt to and when there are small children involved you game less when there are teenage children involved you game less um when you're in relationship or whatever you you game less unless your partner's a committed gamer mrs peril is not she's a gaming muggle but she's also very considerate and allows me to indulge my vices so you know it's, it's going to be interesting but i've been scaling back my my gaming anyway i'm only really playing one mmo at the moment and just dabbling with a few simple single player games but they're the sort of games that you can jump in and out of easily but that's fine i don't have a problem with that because although i won't be gaming i'll be doing other fun things like going out and visiting places like english heritage sites and having nice meals in restaurants and going to wine bars and being rude to mrs peril's friends and stuff like that turns out there's a whole big world out there isn't there 
is as a world. Who the fuck? Yeah, and, you know, sometimes it can be quite a good place. So moving into the future, you've mentioned on your own podcast that you do have some plans for a future project. And this is specifically, again, for Roger. Are you ready to give Beyond Boss Fights an exclusive <laughs> and let us know what you're thinking about doing next? Yeah. Um, this is something that I have been thinking about for a long time, and it can be cogently argued that maybe I should have tackled it two, three years ago. I have wished for a long time to collate and produce a book, a, a non-fiction book, and I had several ideas of what subject matters I was going to tackle. And recently, through advice and discussions that I've had with several people who have had some dealings with writing and have been relatively successful at it, I've finally narrowed down now what it is I'm going to write about. And I'm not going to divulge that at the moment, but there is a book in development and there is a time frame. It's a quite a lengthy time frame because, as I said earlier, I've got other demands on my time at the moment, and there's a, there's a chance that the time's going to get even – leisure time's going to get even shorter and shorter. So um, I haven't painted myself into the corner with relation to that. Also, I have a compulsion to podcast, and it's the old adage about sticking to the things that you know, and I've always wanted to do a movie podcast, but a, an in-depth one. Very much like how Dana does it on his show. Not necessarily identical to the way he's doing it in his format, but a show where if you discuss movies, it gets taken to a level and, and you assume from the start that the people listening have are familiar up to a certain level. Do you know what I mean? It's, a, it's very much a sort of going to be a specialist sort of show um, because movies is the passion that endures for me, where I might fall in and out of love with gaming movies is still something that i can wax lyrical about and in depth at any time so those are the two projects that are in development but just again to reiterate it's they're not give it a calendar month and they're going to be good to go these are things that have got quite lengthy production time frames dana of course being dana buckler of the yes. houses movie podcast houses movie yes and a very good show on the tgn network and if you're interested in movies you should check it out Brian, I'm going to throw the same question to you. Um, I, now that now that Roger's not doing all the podcasting work for you anymore, do you have <laughs> do you have any kind of uh, plans for future content creation, or are you just going to kind of uh, be a content consumer for a while? I I have plans. Uh, I have uh, something I'm thinking about right now that has a little bit to do with the powdered food episode that we did. I think our penultimate episode, wasn't it? And yes. my my involvement with uh, that, I'm trying to decide if I want to go forward with that and what that would look like. Um, and I am also writing currently. I'm researching a book, a novel, actually. I'll go so far as to say that. But I don't okay. – I've never written a novel. I have written fiction. So I'm not really sure if I can pull it off, and that's why I don't want to talk a whole lot about it. But it's, it is something I'm actually actively working on, including uh, this very day I've been doing some with that. I'm in total awe of people who can do that. I can barely keep my thoughts together for a 300-word blog post. And keep us, keep us updated. I'm sure there's some people out there who'd be interested in checking it out. Well, I'm going to have to have a Twitter if I do that. So, <laughs> so I have to let you know what that is at some point. So what's next for the two of you? You're obviously still friends. Seem like you're still enjoying the podcast together, doing the podcast together. Is it possible that we might see a Brian and Roger collaboration sometime in the future? I think so. Might not be in the next calendar month, but I certainly think that Brian and I need to pursue the, the various projects that we want to pursue at the moment. I think at a future date, we will one day there'll just be a Skype call. Because regularly I say to Brian, what are you doing? You know, Catch up yeah. on Skype, and we catch up on Skype. And I'm sure at some point in the future, we should just do – we'll we're, we're do it just like we usually do, fly by the seat of our pants, and it'll just be, should we do a new show? Yeah, okay. Go and sort it out. And then within 24 hours, we're recording it. So I don't know. Maybe a year from now, you might get, you know, pet your chihuahua with Brian and Roger. Who knows? <laughs> you know? we, we yeah, let's hope that joke doesn't die. Yeah. <laughs> We have literally had podcast segments that just came from our Skype conversations where he started recording and not telling me. And they, they made it into some of the podcasts. Sneaky. Which is kind of funny. Yeah, I, I, I will say that there's an idea that he and I have been kicking around for a couple of years. Again, completely not gaming related. Something that we both seem to have an interest in. But I, I, 
after doing, I mean, we're 300 episodes, something somewhere around that end of this, um, over the past four years or whatever, uh, it'll be nice to have a little break from it. And maybe doing that, if we do decide to come back and do something in the future, we'll be a little bit fresher than we are right now. Yeah. What we do have, and I think it is quite advantageous, is we have the international thing going on. Mm-hmm. And I think that what, what helps our sort of podcasting relationship is the fact that I'm in the UK, so I'm nearer to Europe, and Brian's in the US. And there is this opportunity for sometimes, you know, the cultural divide, and that can be a good talking point in itself. I mean, even after f- five years plus of knowing each other, we're still talking about things because every now and then there'll be you do that in the US or you do that in the UK because like tonight before we started this recording I just turned around and said to Brian I said when you make a sandwich is is it common practice in the US to butter the bread first and Brian virtually spat at me back no of course it's not and and (laughs) and it's just really interesting you know it's like okay finally you know that's another cultural difference laid to rest I I think I've Never butter my bread when I've made a sandwich. <laughs> exactly. What well, a I, filthy I, I, idea. I, l- l- let me interject here. When I was a child, my mom did put butter on ham and cheese sandwiches for us, but that was the only kind for some reason. Uh huh. I don't know why. But yeah, for the most part, I, I do agree. That doesn't happen very often. No, that, it's, it's like a weird thing. Yeah, well, there's a 60 million people in the UK that do that with me. <laughs> well, there you go. Well, you know, there's 300 million people here that don't. Oh, okay. Yes, well, <laughs> if you ask very, very nicely, I'm sure there might be an extra wall built around the UK. Yeah, <laughs> We're, we're going to make you pay for it. Yes, or we'll get the butter company to pay for it. <laughs> get Lurpak to pay for it. We're going we're gonna to make the margarine company pay for it. They've got all the money. <laughs> the thing about Roger and I is I think we get along, and I know that even though we talk outside of podcasts, we have a lot of fun doing podcasts, you know. Yeah. To me, over four years, this has become something that we did just about every week, and it was something to look forward to. So, I, And I just want to say this as a, as a sort of a tribute to my fellow podcasters, or our fellow podcasters, should I say. You listen to a show like um, Agro Chat or Cat Context or Battle Bards. Oh, funny, all the shows that just happen to be on the TGN network. But they work well because there's a good dynamic between the hosts. I mean, I was listening to, as I said, Couch Potatoes, and Islaine was riffing off Dune, and Dune was mocking Eri, and Eri was having none of it and put her foot firmly down on Dune. And it's just... Look at um, recently with the um, geek to geek podcast. Instantly... It endeared itself as a good many people because there is just such a good relationship between Professor Beege and Void. It's just tangible. They they spark off each other well, and they obviously get on exceptionally well. And it's it's not one of those things where everyone's just thrown into the mix and they don't necessarily get on or they talk across each other. It getting a good co-host or co-hosts plural, you know, it's it really helps and such an integral part i think to the actual podcast it's it helps when your listeners like what you say and hopefully like you okay so the most important question really in the whole list is what in the world is going to happen to the contains moderate peril brand that you built over the last four years are you going to change your twitter handle which incidentally is still moderate peril no 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 um that is you nailed it in the term brand it is in its own little peculiar way it's a little mini brand and that will be kept. I humor and flatter myself, and everyone's fit free to contradict me, but I reckon because people associate that name with hopefully some good things, that at some future date, if there is a product put out under the banner of contains Moderate Peril or Burton and Scrooge or Chihuahua Productions, at some point, it, you know, people will look favorably and, and that gives, you know, hopefully there'll be a small group of people who will instantly latch onto it. I think rebranding sometimes can be a very divisive thing. And to me, it just seems counterproductive to sort of dismiss and lose that banner and the goodwill that people have been so kind to give. One thing I was curious about is I've never actually shut down a blog or a podcast before, and let's hope it doesn't happen anytime soon. But was there anything surprising about that process, or was it just simply a matter of dropping everything and canceling your services? It's incredibly easy. I chose not to make it so. 
because <laughs> I am committed to quality, or you can say on the other side of the coin, I'm seriously OCD. You can just cancel your subscription, and then people would have hit containsmoderateperil.com or .net and got, this site is no longer available. Click here to, you know, to renew the site, and that makes it sound like you shut, you, the site shut because you're a cheapskate and you didn't pay, pay your bill. And I thought, I'm not having people think that of me. Even though you're a cheapskate and didn't pay the bill. No. What I did was <laughs> I went to the actual company that you know I got the domain from, and you log into the control panel there, and you can disconnect the site in a way that it, you, know, you can either park it and it will go back to GoDaddy or whoever, or you can just disconnect it in a way where people just get nothing. And um, I just wanted to do it that way, just so that it didn't mislead people because – Someone could have missed the tweets and missed the show that said we're shutting it down, gone to containsmoderateperil.com and got the message that it's temporarily offline and just thought, oh, okay, I'll give it a day or two and it will come back. So, you, but, but, but essentially you are right. You can just log into your, your hosting company and just cancel the subscription and you, once soon as your credit runs out, it goes. So it can be as complicated or as easy as you, you want it to be. I mean – What's happened with SoundCloud and the actual podcast? I've gone from the pro account, which cost X amount of dollars a month, to the free account. And obviously, there were 30 episodes there, which was far too many for the free account. So it just said you can keep X amount of hours of podcasts. And that was all taken up with the final episode. So at the moment, Burton and Scrooge on SoundCloud is there, has a presence. But the only um, show that's available on that particular one is the... um, Ask me anything, and I'll give it another month, and then I will take that down. So, you know, there's, there we are Burton and Scrooge page, but no podcast there. Yeah, it's been a while since I, I, I shut down Mortar or Bus, but I do have a little bit of experience doing this. And, and he's right. The, the actual process of shutting it down is surprisingly simple. You log into a couple websites, you click a couple things, yep. and it's done. The mental process, at least for me, was much harder. Mm. Uh, for whatever reason, it was I agonized over the decision to shut it down, and then once I shut it down, I agonized over whether I should have shut it down. And some days, I still wish I had that website back. If you're going to shut it down, there, there's kind of this air of finality to it. Can I just interject, Brian, that you have to remember that it's the internet and nothing truly goes away because you pointed out to me that Stitcher rips your show and rehosts it because they stick their own adverts and stuff in it. So you can still find some old Contains Moderate Peril podcasts, even though the source files are not even available anymore. Well, you can still find old uh, Mortar Bus content on the Wayback Machine, but I gave up the Mortar Bus domain. And if you go to MortarBus.com right now, it's some scraping website that has a mixture of e-commerce and my old articles somehow showed up on it under <laughs> my name, which I didn't give them permission to do. But whoever owns that just decided to have it. The, the only other thing that I would say is when you close your site, export your website first. If you are concerned about keeping your content, export it. Um, I used several services and exported all my posts as Word documents and PDF files. And everything that I did for Contains Moderate Peril when it moved on to Squarespace, I got into the habit of writing the posts on in Word first and then just exporting them. So I've got individual Word documents for quite a lot of the posts. But, yeah, you know, you, you can sometimes, because it is so easy, you can shut everything down and then suddenly realize that you've lost all your content for good. And, you know, if you want to use it, again or keep it for nostalgic reasons um you shot yourself in the foot so um do it with a level head when you do it the following message is only for those who used to listen to the mmo show hey we're really sorry about what we did we know you have a choice in podcast listening and your time is valuable and you know what you gave us a shot and we blew it but people can change We, we can change. We've learned from our mistakes, and we promise the next episode will be better. So please, we're begging you, head over to the MMOshow.com and stick us in your ears, you know, for old time's sake. 
Okay, we had no feedback this past month or the past couple months, but you know, most of that's on me because I'm not podcasting very consistently anymore. Um, hopefully that's going to change with my, my new format, my new format, which is whichever format I choose at the given day. But if you do have feedback, you can either email me at braxwolf at gmail.com. I'll read it on the show if you want me to. This is a reminder that Beyond Boss Fights is on iTunes. We would definitely appreciate your ratings and reviews as we talked about earlier. Beyond Boss Fights is also on Stitcher and Player FM, so add it to your playlists. Guys, thanks you so much for coming on the show tonight. It's always great to have you on. Roger, you've been on several times. Brian, you're a rookie on Beyond Boss Fights, but you handled yourself very well. It's almost like you've been on a podcast before. I appreciate you having me on, actually. It's been fun. Indeed. Thank you very much indeed for um, the opportunity for us to come on and just whinge about the shortcoming of our listeners. Roger, I know you have you have a Twitter account still. Do you want to give people your uh, contact info? Yeah, despite the fact that everything else has been closed, I still do have a Twitter handle. So I'm available at Moderate Peril, and um, I still do participate on Twitter um, regularly and enjoy it. It's not something I intend to leave. Uh, so stop by and be rude. And Brian, crickets. Well, I actually have a Twitter account. It's just I don't have access to it. So if you want to tweet me at, at Brian CMB, I think it is. Yeah, that's what it is, yes. Feel free, but I can't remember the email or the password. So apparently if you don't know those things, Twitter doesn't let you access the account. I believe your last tweet was in 2014. It might have been. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Well, as for me, anyway, you can get a hold of me on Twitter at Braxwolf. That's B-R-A-X-W-O-L-F. Of course, as I said before, you can email me at Braxwolf at gmail.com. You can see me on Facebook, Anook, and YouTube. And my blog, as always, is at Braxwolf.com. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next time. Thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will see you next time. Except we won't because it's not a visual medium and I'm not a pedant.